In the heart of the majestic French Alps lies a secret buried beneath the snow-capped peaks. A prophecy veiled in mystery, silenced by the Catholic hierarchy and hidden in the Vatican archives for decades. Welcome back as we continue to reveal censored and suppressed prophecies of Our Lady of La Salette. In our previous episode, we merely scratched the surface of the prophecies obscured and hidden by modernist Rome. But what other secrets lie shrouded in the whispers of the past? The apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary at La Salette on September 19, 1846, has long been a source of controversy, particularly regarding the undisclosed elements of Our Lady's message. Join us as we journey deeper into the shadows, where the veiled prophecies of Our Lady of La Salette shed a light from heaven on the state of the Church and the spirit of our age. The forbidden prophecies of Our Lady of La Salette are waiting to be unveiled. Are you ready to face the secrets they hold? Buckle up as we embark on our second installment of our examination of the censored prophecies of Our Lady of La Salette. Evil books will be abundant on earth, and the spirit of darkness will spread everywhere, a universal slackening in all that concerns the service of God. They will have great power over nature. There will be churches built to serve these spirits. People will be transported spiritually from one place to another by these evil spirits, even priests, for they will not have been guided by the good spirit of the gospel, which is the spirit of humility, charity and zeal for the glory of God. On occasion, the dead and the righteous will be brought back to life. That is to say that these dead will take on the form of righteous souls which have lived on earth in order to lead men further astray. These so-called resurrected dead, who will be nothing but the devil in this form, will preach another gospel contrary to that of the true Jesus Christ, denying the existence of heaven, that is to say, the souls of the damned. All these souls will appear as if united with their bodies. In places, there will be extraordinary wonders, because true faith has died and a false light shines on the world. Woe to the princes of the church, whose only occupation will be to heap wealth upon more wealth and to preserve their authority and proud domination. As the holy faith of God is forgotten, every individual will wish to be his own guide and superior to his fellow man civil and ecclesiastical authority will be abolished. All order and justice will be trampled underfoot. Nothing will be seen but murder, hatred, jealousy, falsehood and discord without love for the mother country or the family. The Holy Father will suffer greatly. I will be by his side to the end in order to receive his sacrifice. The wicked will make several attempts on his life, but they cannot harm him. But neither he nor his successor will live to see the triumph of the Church of God. All the civil governments will have one and the same plan, which will be to abolish and do away with every religious principle, to make way for materialism, atheism, spiritualism and vices of all kinds. In the year 1865, there will be desecration of holy places. In convents, the flower of the church will decompose and the devil will make himself like the king of all hearts. May those in charge of religious communities be on guard against the people they must receive. For the devil will resort to all his evil tricks to induce sinners into religious orders. For disorder and the love of carnal pleasures will be spread all over the earth. France, Italy, Spain and England will be at war. Blood will flow in the streets. Frenchmen will fight Frenchmen. Italian will fight Italian. A general war will follow which will be appalling. For a time God will cease to remember France and Italy because the gospel of Jesus Christ has been forgotten. The wicked will make use of all their evil ways. Men will kill each other massacre each other even in their homes. At the first blow of his thundering sword, 
the mountains and all of nature will tremble in terror, for the disorders and crimes of men have pierced the vault of the heavens. Paris will burn and Marcel will be engulfed. People will believe that all is lost. Nothing will be seen but murder, nothing will be heard but the clash of arms and blasphemy. The righteous will suffer greatly. Their prayers, their penance and their tears will rise up to heaven and all of God's people will beg for forgiveness and mercy and will plead for my help and intercession. And then Jesus Christ, in an act of his justice and his great mercy, will command his angels to have all his enemies put to death. Suddenly, the persecutors of the Church of Jesus Christ and all those given over to sin will perish and the earth will be desert-like. And then peace will be made and man will be reconciled with God. Jesus Christ will be served, worshipped and glorified. Charity will flourish everywhere. The new kings will be the right arm of the Holy Church, which will be strong, humble, pious in its poor but fervent imitations of Jesus Christ. The gospel will be preached everywhere and mankind will make great progress in its faith for there will be unity among the workers of Jesus Christ and man will live in fear of God. This peace among men will be short-lived. Twenty-five years of plentiful harvest will make them forget that the sins of men are the cause of all the troubles on this earth. A forerunner of the Antichrist, with his troops gathered from several nations, will fight against the true Christ, the only saviour of the world. He will shed much blood and will want to annihilate the worship of God to make himself be looked upon as a god. The earth will be struck by calamities of all kinds, in addition to plague and famine which will be widespread. There will be a series of wars until the last war, which will then be fought by the ten kings of the Antichrist, all of whom will have one and the same plan and will be the only rulers of the world. Before this comes to pass, there will be a kind of false peace in the world. People will think of nothing but amusement. The wicked will give themselves over to all kinds of sin. But the children of the Holy Church, the children of the faith, my true followers, they will grow in their love for God and in all the virtues most precious to me. Blessed are the souls humbly guided by the Holy Spirit. I will fight on their side until they reach a fullness of years.